to Wednesday! Hump day, folks, in the number one form. Number one source, hottest show on the streets, talking your Crimson Tide football news. In my own words, George truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. We're bringing you the show from the magic city of Birmingham, streaming this to you via YouTube, speaking of the channel. If you haven't done so already, Hit that subscribe button right now. Smash subscribe so that way you can have all that you crave on your Crimson Tide. Also, run those likes up. Give a thumbs up. Leave a like on the show. Make this your show, your network, your platform, your space to talk Bama football. Turn on all of those notifications. Hit that little bell so that way you miss none, absolutely none of your entertainment on your favorite program. We also got you covered on Facebook and Twitter as well, streaming to you the show. But people, we got a smash show today. We got a big one, because a little bit later on the show, we're going to be joined live by my guy, two-time college football playoff national champion, former Alabama linebacker Christopher Allen, joins the show a little bit later. He's competing in the NFL scouting combine. It's going to be outstanding getting a chance to talk to my man C.A. So you do not want to miss that. Also, we want to hear from you tonight, the Bama Nation, your passion, your thoughts, your opinions, your phone calls. You can do this by dialing 205-448-1358. Number to call in to let your voice be heard on the show, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you. Daily Super Chat Go, $75. Daily Super Chat Go. Appreciate all of you guys. Got to shout out right now, Jamie Wilhelm. Jamie Wilhelm with that $4.99 in the Super Chats. Appreciate the love there coming from Jamie. Showing love here on the show. Once again, the Daily Super Chat goes $75 right there. I got to shout out my man John Ivor in the building doing his thing on the ones and twos there in the production studio Super Bowl Sunday this weekend between the Rams and Bengals. Going to be a fun matchup right there. But we now get into topic number one here of the conversation as we continue to smooth and cruise through the offseason. And this one goes to Bill O'Brien. Billy O, Coach O.B., Bill O'Brien, it's looking more and more like he will have a second year at the University of Alabama as the offensive coordinator to the happiness of some fans and to the disappointment of others. Now, at the start of uh, the offseason, there were eight, well, not the offseason, but in the last couple of weeks, there were eight NFL head coaching jobs that were open. Boy, have those suckers filled up quick. The last remaining vacancy happens to be of the Minnesota Vikings, but they look to have their guy pretty soon here as well. So, you know, the eight head coaching hires are filling up or have filled up. O'Brien interviewed for the Jacksonville Jaguars opening, and so many people felt like he would get that one close relationship with Trent Baalke. That did not happen. The Jaguars have gotten Doug Peterson to help out Trevor Lawrence, and, and Alabama fans were like, well, Maybe the New England Patriots. That's probably the spot where Bill O'Brien's going to go. I mean, he spent years in New England, built up that relationship, that rapport with Bill Belichick. There were so many reports surfacing about how the feeling was mutual between O'Brien and New England, O'Brien and Bill Belichick, O'Brien and the Patriots. But it looks like the Patriots have gone in a different area as well, hiring Joe Judge, who flamed out after two years as a head coach with the New York Giants. He returns home to Foxborough to Belichick and New England, where he served recently as a special teams coordinator and wide receivers coach. And according to reports from Ian Rappaport of NFL Network, somebody of whom a very reliable individual in the media he states that new england may not even hire an offensive coordinator and may just bring joe judge in uh circle some things around shift some things around and then go from there so it's looking more and more like o'brien will remain in tuscaloosa for a second season and we kind of got the gist of that when nick saban mentioned that 
on the on la on this week during the uh, the, early, the the traditional signing period, uh, Saban talked about how you know O'Brien enjoying it in Tuscaloosa. He actually likes it in T Town. He doesn't feel like O'Brien's going to go anywhere. We kind of heard these things coming from Coach Nick Saban. There should have been a radar going off on. You no, know, maybe O'Brien is not going to leave Tuscaloosa, but it's looking more and more like he will be at the university for his second season. And for me. I feel like there are some areas where this is a good thing for the Crimson Tide. So I'm going to get into the three reasons why it's a good thing for O'Brien to be here for a second season. For a second season, and number one, just the relationship that he has with Bryce Young. There's a mutual relationship. There's a mutual understanding between Bill O'Brien and Bryce Young. The two, uh, the two uh, like to collaborate with each other. They enjoy collaborating with each other, and uh, it's a good. It's it's good continuity to have a quarterback with his same uh, offensive coordinator for more than one year. It is good continuity to have that. And with getting O'Brien and with having O'Brien back in Tuscaloosa, here's a chance for he and Bryce Young to work even more together, to build even more understanding, to build even more chemistry, even more continuity, get more of a of a knowledge of what does Bryce Young like to do here? What, what's, what's the favorite play? What's the favorite um, maneuver? What's the favorite movement? What's the favorite formation? Getting more of these things here from Bryce Young in terms of, of O'Brien building with him. And you never like to just turn over coordinators each and every year, especially offensively with the game going more so toward that side of the football. So getting or potentially having O'Brien back does big things for one Bryce Young in terms of that chemistry, that continuity, uh, that relationship on the field. Number two, I look at you know, O'Brien will have a chance to work more so and get the most out of this group of young but highly talented wide receivers. And we saw it a season ago uh, in the national championship game where uh, those guys were put out there, uh, a J.I. Uh, uh, Hall, Ja'Cory Brooks, you know, a lot of those guys were put out there in the field. And, yes, they suffered some drop passes, but we did see in 2021 where Ja'Cory Brooks stepped up and made plays. We did see – in the national championship game, Hall did make a couple of catches there. We did see, when given the opportunity, Trayshawn Holden could be something special there. We did see, at times, a lot of these young guys step up. And now with the infusion of Jermaine Burton in here, another season where Bill O'Brien can see the personnel, understand the personnel, jail with the personnel, vibe with the personnel, and most importantly, get the best personnel on the field in terms of speed, playmaking abilities, route running, hands blocking, knowing the playbook, all of those sorts of things coming together, coming in order, coming into fruition. So that's number two with him being an offensive mind. And then number three, you can look at it just O'Brien could become the fourth offensive coordinator in the Nick Saban era at Alabama to win a national championship in his second season. Year two has always been a big year for OCs at Bama under Saban. Jim McElwain was the first to do this. 2009 was his second season, took Alabama to the national championship and won that game taking care of Texas. And then you go 2015, Second year of Lane Kiffin takes Alabama to the national championship where it faces Clemson. And the first matchup between Bama and Clemson got the national championship with a 45-40 to 40 victory. And then 2020, the second year of Steve Sarkeesian at Alabama, he takes the team undefeated national championship, taking care of Ohio State 52-24. to 24. So we've seen the pattern here. Guys in their second year under Nick Saban, having more confidence, more comfortability, understanding the role a bit better, understanding the expectations coming from Nick Saban and the fans a bit better. And they're able to use all of that to better themselves and guide the team, coach the team, assist the team to a national championship. So these are all good things as to why Bill O'Brien remaining in Tuscaloosa for a second season is a, a positive one. And for me, as much as people 
like to throw shots at O'Brien. And yes, he has his flaws, absolutely. But for me, I want to pose this thought here. Was it more so O'Brien or Doug Marone that caused a lot of the offensive issues? You got to think about that because even with – People say, well, O'Brien could have used more screens. He could have used more slants. He could have used more quick game, quick pattern with an offensive line that's struggling. And, yes, he could have. But what if he runs up on a team that takes away all of your quick game, quick pattern, and forces you to go more so over the top? That means your offensive line has to be able to block for a substantial amount of time. And we saw this a season ago, Alabama's offensive line, whether it was Doug Marone not understanding the personnel that he had or Doug Marone choosing to not move off of, ga- off of guys when he should have moved off of guys because absolutely makes no sense when you don't figure out who the center truly is into the second half of a 12th game of the regular season, that being the Iron Bowl. But on top of that, Right tackle was a turnstile all year where Chris Owens didn't work and Damian George didn't work and a whole bunch of other guys did not work. You had freshmen that you could have played, but you did not choose to play. And then at the guard position, that production was sort of up and down at that spot. So as much as we say Bill O'Brien could have done this, Bill O'Brien could have done this, O'Brien could have fixed this, it sometimes uh, it's not going to work if you don't have an offensive line where the coach over that positional group doesn't understand the personnel out there, doesn't know or doesn't get when to change the personnel, when to move off of personnel, when to get different guys on the field that know what's going on and know what to do, why to do, how to do, and the importance of doing. So to me, it was more, it could be very well, more so Maroon than O'Brien, and that's the reason why uh, Coach Saban made the move to bring in Eric Wolford from Kentucky. Here's a guy that's a bit more technical, physical as an offensive line coach, a guy that's going to get back to that rough and tough style of play that U.S. Bama fans want to see back infused into the program and the culture of uh, this team. So now we're going to get a chance to really see, you know, starting this spring into the upcoming fall, was it more so Marone than O'Brien? Or is O'Brien really the guy that may have uh, the issue there? But I feel like get, get him having his second year, really good for him. He's got the relationship with Bryce Young. You want to build on that. You want to cultivate that. He's got a chance to take a young but talented group of wide receivers and get the most out of them. And we've seen the track record. O'Brien knows that second year, you saw McIlwain win a national championship. You saw Kiffin win a national championship. You saw Sarkeesian get a national championship. And I think O'Brien knows the expectation year two got to be a a national championship for him uh, as an offensive coordinator with the Crimson Tide. But it's looking more and more like he will remain uh, at the University of Alabama for a second season. But we take a break here, folks, on the show. Don't touch that dial. We're just getting started upon our return. We go to the phone lines to grab your calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your chats. We get into a conversation with you that's coming right after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. What's up, Bama Nation? This is Rudy Griffin, former Alabama defensive lineman, and you're listening to my guy, Stephen M. Smith, In My Own Words, brought to you by Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Roll time, roll. Nine players have teamed up and released the Alabama Team Paper, which is a video yearbook they've put out for sale direct to fans. Now, for the first time, small dollar purchases from the fans can support the players as a group as well as a great cause because one dollar of every subscription payment is donated to the Boys and Girls Club of America. Be a five-star fan base and support your team and a great cause with Team Paper. Check it out at teampaper.com slash Alabama. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. 
They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. We're back in, folks, from the break on a Wednesday hump day. Number one form and ticket for your Crimson Tide football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith. Touchdown. Alabama Magazine continue making this your show, your network, your channel and space to talk Bama football. Run those likes up. Give a thumbs up. Like the show right here. Also hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already here to touch down Alabama Magazine on YouTube. We go to the phone lines right now to take your calls. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. Number to call in to let your voice be heard on the show, 205-448-1358. We grab a call here. You're live on the show. How we feeling? What's going on? State your name and where you calling from. What's going on, Steve? This is Elijah calling New Jersey. How you feeling, bro? Doing good, man, and yourself. Man, I ain't feeling too good, man. I'm I'm kind of disappointed today, bro. And um, the reason is, it seemed like everybody giving this uh, Bill O'Brien a pass, man. I just can't do it, Steve. I ain't going to lie to you. I, I try. I can't do it, man. Um, I see no reason for this man to still be there. And, and, and here's my concerns with it, Steve. Um, you say it's, it's a good thing for um, he have more uh, continuity with somebody like um, Bryce Young. You know, they, they can grow together. You know, they got that chemistry this year for year two. But we're talking about Bryce Young, Stephen. We're not talking about a, a, a scrubby quarterback. We're talking about Bryce. Bryce got all the tools. He got all the mechanics. We're talking about this man had Jameson Williams. He had John Mechie out there, man. You know, he don't got no bum scrub receivers out there. The one thing that I'm going to say that's the difference between Bill O'Brien, Steve uh, Sarkeesian, and, and uh, Lane Kiffin, those guys, the schemes, they, they, the offensive scheme, the play calling, it, it, it was like they had a game plan. Bill O'Brien don't even look like he got a game plan. What it looks like to me out there is that we're just more talented. Our talent is what's, what's keeping us um, above and beyond. It ain't the, the, the play calling of, of Bill O'Brien. It's not the schemes that he's running. It's, it's just that we're more talented. We're more athletic than a lot of these teams that we're playing. Our skill set is better. And when it comes down to a game where we're going to have to out-scheme a team and the play calling needs to be there, I truly believe Bill O'Brien is going to fail us. You know, he's not a, a Lane Kiffin. You, you remember how many times you've seen Lane Kiffin before he, he could look at the defense, and before the play is the ball is even snapped, he's throwing the clipboard in the air because he knows it's a touchdown. You don't see that from Bill. I don't even think Bill just go on the sheet and say, "Okay, it's third and eight. Let's just throw something. Let's let's, let's throw a, a pass for ten yards. Let's try to get a completion." With with Steve Sarkeesian and Lane Kiffin, they set up other plays. Bill O'Brien didn't seem like he set up the, 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 a home run threat play. You just had, it just seemed like to me you had a guy like Jamison Williams that, you know what? Hey, he, he, he's a barn burner. This man is getting behind the defense, and, and you got a, a great quarterback like Bryce Young that can get him the ball. So when you ask that question, is it Doug Marone or was it Bill O'Brien, which one of them was the problem, I'm going to honestly say, it was Bill O'Brien because as you being the offensive coordinator, if you have a weak spot on your offense, you're supposed to be able to adjust to that. And just like you said, even though uh, he didn't do a lot of screens, you at least try it, Steve. You know what I'm saying? You got to at least try that, you know, to see if 
you know, this could help out the offensive line. If this could help out the offense, period. But this man just totally seemed like a band in the screen game. Then you saw in the Texas A&M game, you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure Coach Saban had a stern talking to this dude after that Texas A&M game. Like, bro, we on the one, two-yard line, and you going to throw three or four passes? Like, are you serious? I just don't think this man brings a good game play. I don't think he's a good offensive mind. Like, he just don't have it to me. With all that talent out there, Steve, I'm going to be honest with you, you could go out there and put up points on the board. It's a lot of talent at Alabama. Don't put me out there, Elijah. Don't put me out there, man. (laughs) (laughs) But, bro, how hard – just think about it. You got Jamison Williams, John Mechie. If you want, you could throw in Slade Bolden. And then look at the guys on on the bench that you got, man. Then you got big Brian Robinson in the backfield. You know, then you got Jace McClellan, Roy Wood. You got a, a whole stable full of talent, bro. It, 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 you don't have to be a mastermind to do what he did. This dude just, I, I don't see it, man. I think you can get somebody else in there that will maximize these players' ability and, and will give you more. Like the offensive production would be even more with the talent that, that, that's there. I don't see why Bill O'Brien ain't going. And I think the reason is nobody else want him because they know he a bust, man. I, I truly do feel, man, they know he a bust. And like, yo, we go in a different direction. If Alabama didn't have the skill set they had, you know, they probably would have lost a couple more games. But since they are so talented on offense, that's what pulls them through this game. Not that old sorry play calling from Bill, but Steve, I will recommend you for that job as offensive coordinator, man, because you do know your uh, you do know your schemes. You 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 know what plays to call, which ones not to, and and who to try. And you honest with it, except for today. Today, I don't think you being honest with why Bill O'Brien should be staying there, bro. I think today your your political side came out, but man, keep it one hundred. You know that man should be gone, Steve. He should be right with, with Doug Marone. I don't care if he with the Cleveland Browns or the Bad News Bears or who. That man should be gone up out of Tuscaloosa. But I'm done venting, bro. Love your show. Thank you for taking my call once again. Appreciate it, Elijah, for those thoughts right there. I mean, Bill O'Brien would not be my guy. Bill O'Brien would not be my guy at all. I mean, my guy would be either a Joe Brady, maybe even a Tom Herman. Those would be my guys. But once again, I'm not the one making the decision. I'm not the one getting the big check to make these decisions. That guy's Nick Saban. So it comes down to what does Coach Saban feel like? And right now he's saying that he feels like Bill O'Brien's on a good job. That's on, that's on Coach Saban's end. Got shot out my man William Bryan out of Iowa with that 50 piece, that $50 donation in the Super Chat showing love. We're going to make this topic here right quick because we got to get to my man. Chris Allen there on the line. Also, Shannon Shark with that $5 donation. Appreciate the love there coming from Shannon Shark there in the Super Chats. But quick topic right here goes to Terion Arnold, defensive back five-star who came in the 2021 class and a guy that has big-time talent and potential. He put a video up on social media with the caption, uh, breakout year, speaking it into existence. Arnold from Tallahassee, Florida, did not play last season, but with a just stacked deck of talent in the secondary, it's going to be interesting to see where does he fall. He came in as a safety. Alabama has actually worked him at cornerback also. I think he's extremely talented. It's going to be t- it's going to be hard to keep him off the field for a second year in a row, but spring football, keep your eyes on Terry on Arnold of the five-star from Tallahassee, Florida, came in the 2021 class. It'll be interesting to see what he does on the field as he's speaking this breakout year into existence for himself. But we take a break right here, folks, as when we get back, we sit down with a two-time college football playoff national champion, my man, Chris Allen, CA, talks with us right after this. You 
know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw the foes up, but now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Look at all these great players in Touchdown Alabama magazine. Man, wait till I turn up this year. I'm gonna be on the front cover. But what if Will goes off? Or Joe, DeMarco, Chris, Tim, Christian. Don't wait. Order now at touchdownalabama.com or call 833-483-2624 today. As we're back into the action here, folks, on a Wednesday, in my own words, George Trulli, Stephen Smith, touchdown, Alabama Magazine, number one show, talking your Crimson Tide football. Guys, shout out my man, Bill. Bill from New York, that $5 donation, the Super Chats, showing love here on the show. And right now, we go to the In My Own Words hotline. We pick up a good friend of mine. An outstanding friend of mine who is going to be competing in the NFL Scouting Combine from March 1st to March 7th. A two-time national champion from in 2017 and 2020. My man Chris C.A. Baton Rouge, Louisiana Allen in the building. C.A., what's happening, dude? What was happening? <laughs> what was happening? How Got Chris you? Allen... Now, my man, Chris Allen here on the show, two-time national champion for the Crimson Tide 2017 and 2020, going to be competing here in the NFL Scouting Combine at Lucas Oil Stadium, getting set here for this NFL draft. And, and just, Chris, for you, you know, what, what made you feel comfortable about making that decision to turn pro uh, after having this career? Um, I would say just, just, um, just all the work I put in, um, during the spring and the summer and, um, and, um, just fall camp. Like I came back because, um, I felt like there were, I felt like there was a lot of things that I needed to improve in. Um, and so I did those things in the spring, you know, like I really focused upon those things in the spring, summer and fall. And although I wasn't able to, to, to necessarily show it through the course of this through, through the course of this season, I know for myself that I got what it takes and that I know what I need to do to be successful. So speaking of Chris being successful, and if, and if you're just tuning into the show, people were joined here by Chris Allen, former Alabama linebacker, played from 2017 to 2020, a two, 2021, a two-time national champion, 2017 and 2020. So, Chris, you got a chance to be coached by not only Coach Saban as the head coach, but Sal Sanceri as your outside linebackers coach. What did you? What, what what lessons do you take from both of those men as you pursue the NFL? And uh, and how are their personalities different or similar to you? All right. So first, um, all right. So first, I'm gonna start with Coach Sal. Um, um, some of the biggest things that I'll take from him is just it. Is just the demand for excellence, for excellence every day, just every day, no matter what it is, no matter if it's school or on the field, practice, it doesn't matter what it is. Just give it your all and um, do your best. Um, and um, and um, for Coach Saban, you know, it's kind of like just attack everything like a pro because, I mean, Bama is as close as you get to the pros without actually being – in the pros, you know what I mean. Absolutely, I mean absolutely. When you, when you look at uh, when you look at both of those guys, and just for you, and being around both of those guys, did you see where they may have had different personalities, similar personalities? Like, w- what just made those two personality-wise stand out to you? Um, I would say they're pretty much the same. I mean, like they want to win, and they want to win bad. They love winning, but they hate losing even more. So they're gonna do whatever it takes to win. They're gonna do they're gonna do whatever it takes to help us be successful 
as players, both on and off the field. If you're just tuning into the show here on a Wednesday, we got Christopher Allen on the phone lines, former Crimson Tide linebacker, two-time national champion 2017 and 2020, preparing here for the NFL Combine and the draft. Now, Chris, in 2020, I mean, you dominated out there. 13 tackles for loss, six sacks, had a really big year. Just what were some of your favorite memories from that 2020 season? Um, I'll say some of my favorite memories was just being out there, just just balling with my teammates, and um, and just knowing that I played a um, a, a pretty big role, and um, and and pretty much the reason why we were successful, you know, that season. So that was that was you know that's an honor to be a to be a part of, you know, to win a to win a SEC championship and to win um. Um, a college football playoff championship. I mean, this is it's, it's crazy, and um, I was just blessed and honored to be a part of it. Now, now when you look at just this past season, and uh, I know it didn't end the way you or the team would have liked it to, you know, not carrying home that national championship in the matchup with Georgia, but w- what did you take from this past season, or what did you appreciate the most from the 2021 campaign? Um, I just appreciate how pretty much how we as a team is just pretty much just stuck together because, um, and this is a luxury, you know, to, um, to play for Alabama and have these high expectations. But a lot of people was, you know, talking about us, about how we wasn't blowing teams out, you know, but the most important thing is getting a W. You know, um, we made it to the SEC championship and um, people were still talking about us the way that they were. So, I mean, but it's, I mean, it's a luxury. Like any other team, everybody's happy. Everybody's excited. But because we're Bama and we have such high expectations, you know, that's kind of just, kind of just, you know, just what it is. So um, just us as a team, just blocking out the noise and, and um and um this this plan, and you know what I mean, this overcoming. So a lot of people looked at this past season, Chris, as a down year. And even with that being said, you get to the SEC championship and you win. You get to the college, you get to the college football playoff and you beat Cincinnati and you get to the national championship game. And if not for some, if not for some unfortunate bounces there, you probably win that one also. But it, with the players coming back, there's exactly. a lot of guys coming back. You know, who are some guys that? You are so excited to see dominate uh, in the upcoming season. Um, you know, to be honest, if you just scroll up on the roster and you just pick a player at random, that player he has a great chance to come out and have you know like a breakout season. So it's kind of hard for me to for me to just pick one guy when I feel like you know most of the team is you know can have a breakout season. So. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna pick some guys from my room. Um, so Chris Braswell, Chris Braswell has worked really hard ever since he got here. Um, I mean, I just, I just really believe that he's gonna have a really good season and um, just gonna make a lot of plays. Um, our room, the um, the OLB room, has so much talent up in it. You know, um, it's unbelievable. It was just amazing to be a part of that room. When you look at just now, Chris, heading into the NFL scouting combine, I mean, what what are you? What, what are some of your goals in the combine? What are you look? What are you looking forward to doing at Indianapolis and competing to show people why you are in that class of being a, an outstanding edge rusher? What are some of your personal goals in this combine? Um, we're just going to go to the combine and, um, I'm going to do the drills that I can do. And, um, and the drills that I don't do, I'm going to do at my pro day. So, um, that's kind of where we are right now. Um, I just got the screws removed from my foot, um, the 31st. So, you know, um, a little over a week ago. So, my man, so, so my man, how, how, how's the foot feeling? I know it's been a while since the Miami game, but how, how's the foot been? 
Um, it feels great. Um, I just had this surgery. You know, it was the last one. It was um, take the screws out, um, and I feel great. Um, I, I, I feel great. I'm honestly, I'm just ready to get out there and run, and play again, um, just put on this, um, just perform. And, like I'm tired of sitting around and 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 just watching. Like I want to go out there and I want to be great. So. He's ready to get out there, get back on the field, and do his thing. He's Chris Allen, ladies and gentlemen, former Crimson Tide linebacker, two-time national champion, 2017 and 2020. Graciously joining us here on In My Own Words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Chris Allen preparing for the NFL Scouting Combine and the upcoming NFL Draft. Chris, man, we appreciate you taking time to be with us, man. You take care of yourself, man. Be good. Looking forward to watching you dominate this combine in the league, brother. Thank you, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Anytime. Absolutely. Chris Allen to join us right here on the show. Crimson Tide linebacker uh, played from 2017 to the 2021 season this past year. We're going to go to a break right here, folks, on Touch That Dell. Upon our return, we get back to the phone lines. We grab your calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your chats, your interactions. We return to you guys right after this. Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Marvin Constant, all-SEC linebacker and 1999 SEC champion. You are listening to In My Own Words, brought to you by Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Roll Tide. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Whitwill Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care in support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WhitwillSports.com and get your title towel today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. Back into the action here, folks, from the break. Number one form for Crimson Tide Football News. In my own words, George truly Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate my man C.A. Chris Allen, former Alabama linebacker, joining us in that recent segment there. Uh, looking forward to watching him perform at the NFL Scouting Combine coming up, closing in on that NFL Draft in April. But we go to the phone lines. Now to take your calls. The call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. Number to call in. 205-448-1358. We grab this call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name and where you calling from. Hey, Steven. This is uh, Kyron from Albuquerque. That's K-Y-R-A-N. How you doing? Doing doing well, Kyron. How you feeling? Pretty good. Uh, I'll just uh, – I kind of agree with uh, Elijah in regards to, to Bill O'Brien. Um, you know, I don't want to – I don't know the man personally, obviously, you know, I don't want to pile on him, but to me, something just seems off, you know, about the way he carries himself, the way he handles business in terms of, you know, play calling, player management, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's well known, uh, you know, the situation when he was with uh, the Texans and, and, and how he treated DeAndre Hopkins, it kind of seems like he has like a, a little bit of a vendetta against receivers, maybe for some reason, you know, and then we, we look at last season, how, he, he was one dimensional in the sense that he only played one group of receivers, you know, and you know, when, when Mechie and, and, and uh, Jameson got hurt, 
and it was time to call on the call on the young guys. Well, they didn't have experience, you know. So I hope at least going forward, he's able to to kind of change that and and you know, especially now with we have eight nine receivers and most of them are are freshmen and sophomores. Hopefully, he's able to he he knows that he needs to spread the ball around more and get the younger guys involved. But it's kind of funny though when you when you kind of think about it what what he what he did last season kind of reminds me of when, when you were a kid, right? And you played you know Mortal Kombat or you got a new game when you're a kid. You didn't know how to play, so you mash you mash the buttons. You know you don't know you don't know the combination nothing. You mash the buttons and you got a knockout. To me that that's that's how that's how Bill O'Brien coached last year. He didn't he didn't know what he was doing, but you know he, just based off of the talent that the roster had, he was able to be he was able to appear to be successful. So I I I do agree with uh, partly of what what Elijah was saying, and hopefully going forward, Bill O'Brien. So get the young guys involved and, and, you know, and, and, oh, one more thing. It's obvious that the NFL does not want him, right? You know, he had an opportunity to go to the NFL, but it seems like nobody wanted him. And, and to be honest, it kind of seemed like Saban probably wouldn't have been too hurt if he left, you know, he, you know, and he probably didn't really have any really, any real reason to kind of justify uh, getting rid of him, you know? So, Hey, he's like, Oh, well, I guess Bill's coming back next year, guys. You know, I have no reason. I have no, just real justification to, to to let him go. So another year, but that's all, Steve. Just want to thank you again for taking my call. Appreciate Kyron. Appreciate Kyron there for that call. Everybody's got their, their thoughts on Bill O'Brien, and we encourage that. We encourage all conversation here on in my own words. Appreciate Kyron there for that call. We got to shout out my man McConnick with that twenty dollar donation in the super chats. Appreciate the love there from McConnick. And then we got Donnie Chappelle with that $19.99 in the Super Chats. Appreciate Donnie Chappelle. That daily Super Chat goal of $75 has been met. Thanks to you, the outstanding fans and family of Alabama football. We go with this call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name. Where you calling from? Hey, Steven. This is Mike from Kentucky. What's going on, brother? Mike, what's going on, man? How we feeling? Well, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, you know, it, it all stems to the old line. You know, if the old line isn't working, nothing's going to work. So, you know, I, you know, it, it might have been partially play calling, but you know, if if the old line doesn't block well enough to get a good running game ginned up, then you know you're going to have to throw the ball. And look what happened when we played Cincinnati. You know, we dialed in a, a, a run run oriented offense, and by the end of the game. The whole right side of the old line was out. It's a lot easier to get injured. Run blocking, you know, pass blocking takes a lot less energy. So we just had to kind of, you know, go with the. Sh- we went with the shoe that fit last year. But if this new old line coach from Kentucky can get some continuity and some chemistry going with the old line, I think we'll be fine. And I think that'll open up the playbook. I mean, oh. we had a horrible low line last year by our standards. I mean, Bryce Bry- Bry- got sacked 49 times. That's crazy. How many times did Mac Jones get sacked his last year? Like what, 13. 14 for the se- 13? Okay. Well, there's a tremendous difference, and, and we still made it to the promised land. So I don't think there's anything too much to worry about. I think the O line will get remedied in the off season, and I'm looking forward to a tremendous year next year. What do you think, Steven? I mean, Mike, I think it was more so Marone than O'Brien because it's, it's like you mentioned, when you're not having any type of continuity on the offensive line, you're watching Bryce get decked back there, and uh, you're not seeing enough holes being open for your running back. So bringing in Wolford here from Kentucky, much better, technically sound, motivating type of a coach of an offensive line, it should be better. That's what I think. You know, if the, the, the O-line is the most overlooked unit and might, might be the most important unit on the offensive side of the ball. If the O-line ain't working, nothing's going to work. Absolutely. Somebody else get on, Steven. Have a good night, uh, brother. Absolutely. Appreciate Mike from Kentucky. He's celebrating his 60th call anniversary, the 60th call in the history. To end my own words from by my man Mike from Kentucky. Appreciate Mike there and all that he does in supporting the show. We go to this call right here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name and where you calling from. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, Stephen. This is William up here. William, what's, what's going, going on, on, man? 
I'm just uh, hanging out, man. That's a uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, your your uh, talk with a uh, Mike from Kentucky, yeah, and uh, and what you said about the new new offensive line coach. Or, uh, I hope that Wolford is going to be a great help to us. I believe he will. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, I just want to say that uh, whenever whenever uh, Coach Saban does decide to uh, retire uh, 10, 15 years from now, I'm wondering what are these Georgia fans are going to think about when Kirby decides to move over back over to home here. Now, Will, now Will that would be very interesting. <laughs> If Kirby decides to make that move, because people have thrown Kirby's name in that, they've thrown Dabo Sweeney's name in that, they've thrown Lane Kiffin's name in that, put put an asterisk by Steve Sarkeesian, depending on how he does at Texas, but they've thrown his name in that. Quite a couple of names have been thrown into who replaces Nick Saban at, at Alabama once he retires sweepstakes. Yeah, I hope, I hope he, like I say, I, I hope he stays 15 years or more, you know, but Anyway, that's all I got to say for you there. Roll Tide, Steve. Appreciate William there for that call. I mean, Nick Saban's a, a healthy 70. He's a healthy young 70. He doesn't look old at all. So whatever Miss Terry's doing, whatever the family's doing, they're doing a great job in keeping Coach Saban in the best health. I I, I, I have not I, – I don't, you don't see too many 70-year-olds looking like Coach Saban right now. But we grab this call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name. Where you calling from? Hi, Stephen, Bill from New York. Just got a Bill. couple of things tonight real quick. Go ahead, Bill. You know, well, you know, I, I feel I think like most people, like O'Brien, I've said it before, he's not exactly my favorite offensive coordinator we ever had. I'd like to see him on the field, you know, like, like Kiffin and, and Sark. I, I think he belongs on the field, but maybe that's just me. Maybe it doesn't mean anything, but... I really, I, I, you know, Mike from Kentucky was on the money. You know, the previous offensive line that we had was just so good. When you think about it, how about our, our offensive tackles, Leatherwood and Neal? Are you kidding me? You know what I'm saying? Then you had Deontay Brown. I don't know. Did we have a, a guard as good as Deontay Brown last year? Maybe not. I don't think so. And Dickerson in the middle? You know, I, I mean, of course it was going to be better. And these guys are blocking for Najee. You know, and, and in terms of rotating receivers, I'll defend O'Brien a little bit more, maybe even against my better judgment. Last year when we rotated receivers, we were bringing in Mechie. <laughs> you know, there wasn't really like that, that big a drop-off, although a case could be made that there was because, you know, you're talking about Waddle and, and Devontae. They were just unbel- like two complete superstars. You know, so I think we're going to be all right. I agree with you about the uh, new coach. I'm glad we had him. And let's, I, I agree with you again with, with O'Brien. I think if Saban thought he was the problem, he got rid of him. Just get out of here. Get out, he, he, you know what I mean? He chased him right out of Alabama. You know? And the uh, last thing I just want to say, it was great to hear from Chris Allen. What a nice kid. You had him laughing as soon as you got him off the phone. He, what, man, he, he, he's such a calm guy. But he don't play calm, and he's going to make some linebacker in the NFL. And that's all I got tonight, Stephen. Appreciate Bill from New York right there. I, I agree. I, I mean, as much as I would have loved to have seen Chris Allen come back for one more season, you got to respect a young man's decision. If he felt like I have done enough, I've done all I can do in terms of my college career, and I need to go pro and, and get this money and start my, my pro career, then hats off to him. And I'm looking forward to seeing what C.A. does in this combine, what he does in the NFL draft, because somebody's going to get a linebacker that once he gets fully, fully healthy there, he's going to be really, really nice for an NFL team. Got to shout out my man Mattress Matt at a mobile with that $5 donation showing off just here on the show. Appreciate my man Mattress Matt right there. Check us out here on Touchdown Alabama Magazine. I'm going to go to our quick topic right here, and this does go to one Doug Marona, who is heading back to the National Football League. It was reported, it was uh, said today by In Rappaport of NFL Network that Marone is returning to the New Orleans Saints. He was with the Saints from 2006 to 2008. 
as an offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. So the Saints are bringing back a familiar name to its ranks as Doug Marone goes back to the Dirty Dirty, the Big Easy, the New Orleans Saints there. So kudos to the one Doug Marone. But we take this phone call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling tonight? State your name and where you're calling from. This is Curtis from Mississippi. Curtis, what's happening, brother? Well, everything's going good. I want to ask you something. Go you ahead, Bill O'Brien going to the NFL? Well, right now, right now, Curtis is looking like he may be at Alabama for for a second season. People thought it would be the Patriots, oh. but Patriots hired Joe Judge, so it looks like O'Brien may be in Tuscaloosa. We got so much talent there, but he ain't putting the talent in the right place. Well, he's going to have to do it this year, Curtis. He's he going to have to. If he if he's sticking around here, he's going to have to do it this, starting this spring, but he's going to have to do it this year. Yeah. Oh, we got some talent there. Talent is there. I mean, talent everywhere, man. Talent. Yeah, we got talent. I mean, Star Keegan, he, he did it. He used he that talent. He did. Yeah, when Jalen Waller went out, we had Dante Smith, and he used him all over that field in that championship game. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm just watching the show and appreciate what you're doing. Keep keep doing the good work, and I'll holler at you later. Absolutely. Appreciate Curtis from Mississippi calling in. I mean, I, I appreciate you guys for this conversation here on Bill O'Brien. And there's a lot that O'Brien's got to do. He's got to put the guys in the right spots, absolutely. He's got to get the right playmakers on the field. He's got to have the right personnel on the field. He's got to have these guys confident in the plays that he's calling on the field. Now, does he need to be on the field and not in the booth? Now, me personally, I would like to see Bill O'Brien more so on the field, but that's just me. Even if he stays in the booth, if he can call plays that the players feel confident in, with him in the booth, I feel like that's the big thing. A mixture of that and uh, this offensive line being very much so improved. And I think with Coach Wolford in here, that piece will get fixed because there's going to be so much competition across the board from left tackle to right tackle. So I think the offensive line will be fine. It's going to come down to where Coach O'Brien is concerned, uh, getting the right personnel in the field, rotating those guys, and calling the plays that have those guys confident in what they're doing and what they're trying to execute out there on the field. 205-448-1358, number to call in to let your voice be heard. 205-448-1358. But definitely kudos there to uh, Doug Marone back in the NFL or heading back to the NFL to join the New Orleans Saints. But John, I'm actually intrigued by this Super Bowl matchup. I know I want the Rams to win because um, I want to see Matthew Stafford finally get a ring after spending so many years in Detroit and not getting one. But the more I look at the Cincinnati Bengals, I know Joe Burrow's the quarterback and Jamar Chase is the wide receiver, but you do have Jonah Williams and Damian Square on that team also representing Alabama. But is, is Cincinnati truly a team of destiny? Is this really the team of destiny going into SoFi Stadium in L.A. trying to win a Super Bowl? I mean, it's crazy. So hopefully we can get the Rams. Hopefully the Rams can get that for uh, for Matt Stafford there and Sean McVay. But anyway, we're going to go to a break here, folks. Don't touch that down. When we get back, we tidy up loose ends by discussing the NFL Combine. Alabama's got 11 players competing in the event. But which of the 11 guys needs to have a big performance and test well at the Underwear Olympics? We talk former Bama players in the combine half of this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. 
Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. And we are. We are back into the action here, folks, from the break. Number one form for Bama football news in my own words, or truly. Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate everybody for checking us out here on a Wednesday Hump Day Super Bowl week between the Bengals and the Rams on Sunday. Appreciate you guys for checking us out. All the tweets, chat, uh, tweets, chats, texts, uh, donations, calls, making this your show, your network, your platform, your channel to talk Bama football. And before we get into the final topic of conversation, got to remind you of TDAware.com. That's TDAware.com. So, for you fans that want to rep your favorite program, that being Alabama football, and your favorite brand that's giving you all the information on your favorite program, that being us here at TDA, you got to check out the clothing line, TDAware.com. We got you right here. All the shirts, all the hoodies, all the pants, all the leggings, all the style, all the swag, all the sauce, all the culture representing your Crimson Tide and representing TDA, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. You got to check us out right here. Get your clothing wear, get your shopping done right here. TDAwear.com, link in the description. Get you that gear today. Show them that support for Coach Saban, University of Alabama, the student athletes, and us here at Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But NFL scouting combine coming up March 1st to March 7th and of the 324 participants that will be in Indianapolis, Lucas Oil Stadium for the Underwear Olympics. 11 of those will be representing the University of Alabama, the Crimson Tide. Those 11 guys, you can see them right there on screen. You have names like John Mechie involved, uh, Jamison Williams involved, Fidarian Mathis, Josh Job, Jalen Armour Davis, uh, Slade Bolden, Christopher Allen, uh, Brian Ray, just very, uh, uh, all 11 these names involved here in the combine also brian robinson jr he is in there as well but first and foremost here when you look at jamison williams and john mechie if these two healthy they will test well they will test well i know both are coming off of knee injuries uh, Jamison Williams reports have been talking about he's ahead of schedule with his recovery. Uh, John Mechie's recovery has been going smoothly. If they're both good to go, if they're both good enough to to run, because fans want to see J-Mo run this 40-yard dash. And can he do it in the 4-2s or the 4-3s? If he's able to run that da- run that 40-yard dash and he can do that in the time that he wants to do it in, uh, cement him as a first-round pick. Uh, the same thing for John Metchie. If he can do the 40-yard dash within in, in the 4-3s or the 4-4s, he's cemented as a late first, early second-round pick. But to me, I feel like they'll do the events they can do, whatever they want to say to Pro Day, they'll do that. They'll probably take part in a whole bunch of team interviews and team meetings and uh, things of that nature. But if they're healthy enough to run, because people want to see both of these two run, if they're good enough to run, uh, uh, they're, they, they both will test well. But that's just Mechie and Jamison Williams. When I look at Chris Allen and LeBron Ray, this is a combine for these two to show the injuries are behind them. LeBron Ray, injuries took him. I mean, he came in 2017 out of Madison, uh, Alabama, as a five-star athlete, five-star defensive end. There was so much hope. There was so much promise. There was so much high expectation. But unfortunately, just could never truly stay healthy, with the exception of one year, his sophomore season, 
in 2018. And then for Chris Allen, you know, it battled injuries as well, had a foot issue uh, the first part of this season during the game against Miami and didn't play the rest of the year. So for these two, it's are the injuries, can this be a combine where the injuries are behind them? They go out there, they compete well, they test well, they perform well, and they put themselves in a situation where they do have a suitable draft stock to go to make a team and uh, have a good pro career wherever they end up at. When you discuss guys like Josh Job and Jagan Armour Davis, I mean, these two just holding their own in terms of corners. There's a lot of defensive backs in this draft. So for Josh Job and J.A.D., can these two hold their own, not only in the 40-yard dash, but in the on-field drills? Can they hold their own where, where that is concerned and, and test well in that event there? And then, of course, you can look at Brian Robinson. For me, for, where B-Rob is concerned, we talked about this, can he place in the top five in terms of running backs, he had a good week of Senior Bowl practice. He didn't he didn't do much in the Senior Bowl game, but didn't really feature him much in the Senior Bowl game. But during the week of practice, was the top running back for the American team. So he goes to Indy, performs well in that combine, is in the top five running backs. So that's going to be really huge there for Brian Robinson. And then when I look at Slade Bolden, no Slade's going to have to impress some people. Going to have to impress some guys. We know he's not going to be a burner in the 40. Slade's going to probably go four, five, four sixes, you know, slot possession type guy. But in the on field drills and in, in the team meetings, can he just impress people with his knowledge, with his ability to know plays, understand plays, pick up plays, things of that nature? And in the on field drills, you know, hold his own. In, in that regard. So those are just a couple of a few guys that I'm looking forward to watching here in this combine. Now I'm looking forward to watching all of the guys in the combine, seeing them all do well and all perform well in front of scouts, evaluators, coaches, general managers, owners, because you know everybody is going to be at Lucas Oil watching this. But those just a few guys that I'm pulling out of the fray here to see you know, what do they do in this event, once again, it's from March the 1st to March uh, through March 7th, will be aired here on the NFL Network. But best wishes to all 11 individuals for Alabama participating here in the scouting combine as they all try to increase, enhance their value for the upcoming draft in April. But as always, Todd fans, you want the best news, notes, information, and coverage here on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you got the Android phone. Uh, for your audio needs, we got you taken care of. iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm or our heart radio the good and gracious lord sees fit i will look to be back on friday continuing the conversation that is bama football as always tide fans you can purchase individual copies of touchdown alabama magazine have those sent to your door that link will be found in the description if you're trying to get the fresh edition print edition of tda the magazine you go to touchdownalabama.com you click join become a member a subscriber today that link in the description if you're trying to get your hands on the four finger bling necklace four finger bling jewelry courtesy of our guys at we own the fourth quarter.com that's we own the fourth quarter.com that link in the description as well appreciate all of you guys checking us out on today my man chris allen former crimson tight linebacker two-time national champion joining us here on the show and my man john Ivor, as always in the production studio doing his thing behind the scenes here as always people husbands love your wives wives appreciate value those husbands children continue doing the right thing fun thing smart thing good thing but the legitimate thing to not be bored you pick you up you grab yourself those three hearty meals a day those three great laughs a day you protect yourself you protect the loved ones around you until next time folks i'm your man stephen m smith you've been listening baby to in my own words have a great night people 